Um, well, uh, let me share uh, some of our experience or some of the works that's going on at the moment in Singapore in relation to uh, uh, the topic on hand, which is about infectious aerosol transmission in buildings and how to uh, prepare ourselves for the future. So I actually titled this as an overview of the revision work that's going on in Singapore in uh, two different standards. They are different standards, but they are quite related in the sense that they are used in tandem by the design community in Singapore. Let me just give a little bit of a background as to what these two standards are. The first one, it's uh, called the SS553. This was first uh, published in 2009. We did have something for ventilation in a different form before that, but as a Singapore standard, this was first published in 2009. It's called the Code of Practice for Air Conditioning and Mechanical Ventilation Buildings. You can see this more as a design standard. Then there was a revision in 2016. I will say a little bit about this revision shortly because the subject of today's discussion, in a way, in my view, has some bearing to what happened in 2016 in, in relation to some of the requirements in our standard here. And there was another amendment, a minor one in 2017, a more significant one that was done in 2021, and as you can see, that was definitely in relation to COVID-19 and some of the immediate measures that were put in place globally. We have heard about, uh, uh, you know, the ASHRAE Epidemic Task Force effort. We heard from uh, Riva, and we also heard the activities from India. So we, we, we did sort of have some measures in place that were to address the immediate requirements back in 20. 20, if you like, 2020, 2021. And then the second standard that I'm talking about in, in this context here is the Code of Practice for Indoor Air Quality for Air Conditioned Buildings. This is the SS554, also first published in 2009. We did have some guidelines in the past prior to that, but first published in 2009. Then it was revised in 2016 as well. Again, the two revisions for 553 and 554 in 2016. I will talk a little bit more about the specifics, the background and the details shortly. And again, in 2021, we came up with amendments to the standard. And, and you see the word informative. These amendments were informative as in they were guidance and they were not part of the standard per se at that point in time. Because in 2020, when the pan pandemic hit the world, uh, we just had to come up with whatever we can in terms of uh, the measures that can be put into place in buildings, in existing buildings. So I wanted to speak a little bit about the background of the revision that happened in 2016. That was because of the haze episodes that we experienced in this part of the world in a fairly large, uh, on a large scale in 2015. And I mentioned the haze episode in the context of building up the resilience in the buildings itself. In other words, to make the building resilient enough to handle episodes of that nature that are beyond uh, our control and that can occur on and off, uh, sometimes in a very regular manner. So we've got to be prepared for things that would be outside a normal mode of operation. So the element of resiliency in buildings from operate from design point of view, from operation point of view, I think we got it first mooted in our Singapore standards back in 2016. And you can see the two basic requirements of what these two standards are talking about, like the 553, the one below, is about the design specification is actually talking about what one should do when a haze episode occurs. So we are talking about going for a higher level of filtration, MER14, when the outdoor pollution is, uh, is, is poor, when it is high, that's when we need to have a different type of uh, filtration. And the SS554 says exactly the same thing, and this is more in terms of measuring the performance of buildings from those uh, situations. So Take the, the takeaway for, for all of us here is um, when something happens like a haze, let us be prepared. So the, the, the ability to be able to bring about a change in the building operation, that's what we mean by the resilience part of it. And we did that first in 2016 in both these standards. And this addressed the outdoor air quality. 
Now let's come to the COVID-19 times in uh, 2020, the amendments that we were talking about. And this one is in the SSI-53. So we couldn't go and change the standard immediately because there is a process to it. It will take its time. So we came up with this informative uh, kind of appendix or annex as we call it in Annex D. And this followed a lot of the discussion that happened globally, information from the ATF, from the ASHRAE, from Reva, and our own thought processes here, and some of the guidance that our local agencies came up with. All of this is kind of summarized uh, on this slide in a very simple way. So we were talking about the air distribution pathways, the airflow pathways, the occupancy layout. We said in terms of the operational considerations of the air conditioning system, we have to increase the ventilation, we have to increase the air filtration and disinfection where possible. And in, 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 in the process of increased ventilation, uh, the outdoor air supply, and we went in with purging of indoor air, turning off energy recovery, and we heard some of these strategies that were being discussed in the previous presentations as well. So the, the operation and maintenance part, maximizing the ventilation, uh, say in the toilets and common areas, again, to ensure that there's a good circulation of air and good ventilation that can uh, uh, be created in the buildings. So this was almost as if um, you can't put anything new, but make sure that you can enhance the ventilation in the existing facilities. So again, in the SF554, this is the performance uh, uh, standard equivalent, if you want to see it that way. We again spoke about the risk assessment of the mitigation, what sort of measures need to be put in place, the enhanced measures to mitigate increased airborne transmission risk, and of course, the assessment of ventilation adequacy. And we sort of came up with this idea of using CO2 levels as a surrogate, as some means of uh, uh, ensuring that ventilation ventilation is reasonable or adequate, just to give us a sense of what's happening in the buildings. Because remember, this is 2020, 2021, early days of pandemic, and we have not really been able to put a lot of things into action in buildings at that point in time. Uh, a, a bit of the specifics of the recommended measures, um, air conditioned premises where we have centralized air conditioning system, we want to make sure that we have adequate ventilation provision, continuous operation, air balancing. These are some of the routine things one might say, but to make sure that these things are happening in buildings. Um, I guess the most uh, important, I suppose, the, the, the measure that we want to talk about here was treating the recirculated air. In our context in Singapore, we use a very high recirculation rate. That's a basic design concept. 10% of uh, your total supply air could be outdoor air, that is ventilation purpose, and the 90% is all recirculated air. So remember in 2016, we went and, you know, did something about the outdoor air treatment. If there is haze, go and put in a MERV-14 filter. Here we now said, if uh, in the event of a pandemic or those sort of situation, we need to treat the recirculated air. MERV-14 um, is, is the kind of concept of, Increased, increased filtration, uh, disinfection, if you like. These are some of the things that we want to focus on the recirculate component of it. So the current revision that is in progress, even as we speak, there's a, both these committees are currently working together to now incorporate the amendments that we brought about in 2020, 2021 as mainstream standard uh, clauses, if you like. So we will have a revision of our standard happening sometime this year. Uh, and let me just give you a bit of an overview of what that document might look like. We, we are going to bring in the amendments and some of the requirements from an infectious aerosol control perspective into the body of the standard. And um, uh, we're going to enhance those requirements. It will be ventilation related. So there will be increased uh, uh, concept of uh, Clean air. So we are going to be looking at the equivalent clean air concept, referring again to the ASHRAE standard 241, 2023 that Bill spoke about. Uh, and then uh, in the same context that we built in the haze resilience back in 2016, it is our intention that we will bring in uh, a kind of, uh, you know, something like a pandemic resilience, if you like, or something that we can incorporate as a 
things that need to happen in the event of a trigger for an infectious uh, uh, aerosol control requirement in, 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 say, in this country, or for that matter, if there's a global pandemic, should something of that nature happen in the future, our buildings will be operationally ready, and we'll also build in these as part of the design requirements. So we we have this concept, which is not very different than some of the things that have been spoken about so far. There is the normal piece mode operation, design and operation that is, and then there is the resilient mode of operation that we would activate as and when the need might arise. And we are uh, targeting for this uh, publication of this revised version of both SS553 and SS554 sometime in the later part of uh, this year. So I believe that was the last part I want to talk about and I thank you for your attention.